Hello everyone, I'm Paolo Marzioli. And I'm Lorenzo Frezza. From Sapienza University of Rome. Welcome to the second video tutorial for the SDR Play course on uh, understanding radio communications using SDRs. This uh, video tutorial is linked to lecture 4 of the course, named GNU Radio Part 1. Lecture 4 and lecture 5 present a practical exercise on GNU Radio Companion to set up an environment where we can receive data through our uh, SDR Play RSP, radio receiver, and then process it and decode all the data through GNU Radio Companion. Lecture 4 will let us discover more about the most important blocks of GNU Radio Companion, while in Lecture 5 we will connect the SDR player SP1A to GNU Radio Companion to receive actual data. So let's get started now. I hand over to Lorenzo that will show through his computer screen what to do for completing Lecture 4 GNU Radio Part 1. Hello everyone, today we'll be going over uh, GNU Radio Companion. This is an application that is uh, often used by people using SDRs because it is a very simple and fast way to manipulate signals. You can get signals from an SDR, you can get signals from a recording, or you can generate your own signals and um, demodulate them, modulate them however you want. You can um, add multiple signals together and you can apply filters to them all done by software. When you open up the program uh, first you will see uh, an empty canvas. The canvas is this white square in the in the middle of, uh, of the window. You will then see on the right uh, a list of blocks that you can use. Uh, this application in fact uses blocks as a programming method you can see here there's are the two uh, these are the two default blocks the options and uh, the sampling rate variable but you can add more blocks in the, in the canvas to do whatever you want so on the right you have the list of blocks if you do not see the blocks you can go under view show block tree panel and here you have several uh, the, all the blocks separated into categories so here, for example, you have the modulators, the EAM demodulator, FM demodulator, GFSK and GMSK modulator and demodulators, and a whole list of different types of box for modulating and demodulating signals of different varieties. And then you have many other categories, and we'll go through some of them. To add a block, you can either uh, find it on the list, or you can search for it. For example, let's try to generate a signal so we will use a signal source to generate our signal the signal source you can see here it has an input on the left which is the frequency and an output since this is a source block it mainly produces an output it, uh, we actually don't need to provide an input because it generates an output on its own we can see this output using as a uh, a GUI sync. We will look for sync and if we scroll down we will see a QT GUI sync. Uh, the QT is just the engine that, we, that GNU Radio uses to display the data. You can either choose between QT and WX but QT is the favorite at the moment. And uh, GUI stands for graphical user interface which tells us that it will show us something and the sync uh, tells us that it, it takes a signal as an input because it syncs the signal inside it. So we can open up uh, the QT, QT GUI sync and we can connect the two blocks. So here we want, for example, to take the signal output from this block and put it into this sync. To do this, we'll uh, click on the output of the, of the source and then click on the input of the sync and we will see that it, they connect. Uh, the direction of the flow of the, of the signal is shown by the arrow. You can move blocks around and the arrow follows the blocks. You can also try to do the reverse, so you could try to click the input and then the output, but the signal always flows the same direction, from the source to the sync. If you want to now play this, uh, the script, we will need to press the play button at the top. 
we first need to save uh, the script so let's save it as any name and then we'll generate on the bottom of the screen you can see that in this area which is called the console some output is shown uh, mainly uh, it tells us that it's, it is generating the Python code to run the script uh, but, that's, but also it, it generates a warning it tells us that this flow graph may have uh, may not have flow control uh, add a miscellaneous throttle block to your flow to avoid CPU congestion you can see that a new window has appeared uh, this is actually showing the signal in different representations frequency domain, waterfall, time domain, constellation domain um, frequency domain, waterfall, time domain, uh, phase domain, constellation display the frequency display as we as discussed pre in the previous lectures uh, shows us uh, the power density throughout the spectrum so in this case the sampling rate as set by this variable is 32 kHz so we see 32 kHz of bandwidth uh, and then we see that it's just one peak throughout the entire spectrum uh, this is due to um, the signal we are generating our signal is in fact a cosine of frequency of 1 kHz we can find the frequency on the FFT by using the cursor and going over uh, the peak and we can see that it is around 1 kHz we can click and drag over the signal to zoom in you can see that the frequency has changed the frequency uh, labels and uh, we can clearly see that the peak is, uh, is at 1 kHz because the, the frequency of the cosine is 1 kHz if we go over to the waterfall we can see the same thing but uh, in, time, in the time domain also as well so we see the peak of the signal represented by the, uh, the yellow line at 1 kHz here as well we can zoom in to get a better view of the signal to go back to the previous uh, uh, view you can right click uh, anywhere the time domain shows us the signal in the time domain in this case you can see that we actually have two signals why is that? you can see on the right we have the legend you can see here that we have uh, uh, on the right you have the legend and you see, see that the legend tells us that the blue component is the real component of the signal and the red is the imaginary component of the signal why does the signal have two components? you have to remember uh, that most signals are actually complex and due to the fact that they are complex they have an imaginary and a real value you can toggle between uh, uh, one or the other by pressing it the label on the time domain plot in our case our signal source is generating a complex uh, signal and as such the QT GUI sync is showing us a complex signal as well but first let's see about this warning so it's telling us to add a throttle block to avoid CPU congestion why is that? this is because there is no radio connected to GNU radio this means that there is no time limit on a signal it is using all the CPU power to generate the signal as fast as it, as it can uh, therefore the CPU is used at, uh, at maximum and we want to try and avoid that to do that we can add a throttle block as suggested so we will look for throttle on the search and we will drag the throttle block on the canvas we will remove the connection by selecting it and pressing cancel and then we can add the throttle block in the middle if you have doubts about what the throttle block does or any block you can double click the block to open the properties of any block the third tab is the documentation in the documentation you get information on how, on how the block works and it tells you that this should be only used in GUI apps where there is no other rate limiting block since neither the signal source nor the QT GUI sync is limiting for example it is not an SDR we need the throttle block 
in case there is an SDR connected and we have the signal from the SDR then the signal is limited by the real timing of the SDR in this case we need to add the, the, the throttle block going back to general you can see for any block there are um, several properties that change the, between the blocks but a main one is the type the type tells us the um, the signal representation how the numbers are saved onto the memory how the numbers are treated throughout the functions we can see if we click here we have the choice between complex float int short and byte and we can choose between any of them for example we we saw before that we were actually seeing a complex number on the sync and this was because the, the default type is complex if we chose float then we would not have seen the imaginary component let's try to choose float and press ok you can see now that the block has actually changed color the input at the output have changed color and the arrows became red this is because we now have a signal source which is actual an output type of complex which is feeding a signal into a, a block which is a float type and therefore there is an incompatibility of types between the output of one and the input of the other the same goes for the throttle and the QTE GUI sync go to help and uh, go to the types uh, option we can actually see a list of the types that exist between GUI radio there are a lot of colors but not all of them are used uh, all the times you only need to remember some of them the most common are the complex float 32 which is the blue color the float 32 the orange color the integer 16 which is yellow and the integer 8 which is purple the integer 8 is actually uh, often re referred to by as byte and the integer 16 is often referred to as short so if we actually want to make it this work as float we need to change the type for both the source and the sync we'll double click on the signal source and change it to float and we'll double click on the sync and change it to float now the arrows are no longer red and we can press play but now something has happened why is it that we see two spikes this is because the signal has no imaginary component and so GNU radio fills in the imaginary component of the spectrum with the mirror image of the real component so anything on the right of the center frequency so you can see here in the middle we have the zero frequency everything on the right for positive frequency is a real signal anything on the left of the zero axis cannot be represented with a real signal GNU radio has no information about this part so it fills it with a mirror image of the real part. In fact, you can see that the peak is at negative 1 kHz. With the complex signal, GNU radio adds the information about the left side of the spectrum, the negative frequency, therefore it knew that there was no signal there. Okay. Uh, let's try to do something more. Let's see if we can add two signs to two uh, two cosines together. We'll go on the search and uh, search for the add block and drag it over. You can see that it defaults as complex. And then we want uh, to add another signal source block. So we can select the block and then and then we can copy and paste it then we can connect the blocks to the add and then take the output of the add block and put it into the throttle of course the type is wrong so we'll change it to float now these two signals are the actually the same so we, we can change for example the frequency of the other one we can put it at 500 hertz and we can play the script we can see that now we have two peaks in the FFT 
one of 100 hertz and one of one kilohertz. Same goes for the waterfall. The time domain, you can see that this signal, you can see the shape of this signal. But, okay, let's do something even more. Let's say that we want to change the frequency of this signal while we are watching the output uh, on the sync. We can actually manipulate variables uh, while uh, running the application. So we can go over to the, the menu, scroll down to the... We can look for Qt and then we can, for example, drag a Qt GUI range and double click on it. We have an ID, which is the variable name, which is very important, which is it is the name which we to which we refer the variable in order to call it in other parts of the script. We have a label, which is just what the the writing will be on the GUI. We can, for example, call this frequency and give it the ID of frequ to keep it short. The default value, we can keep it at 1 kilohertz. This is the value of the variable when the script starts up. And then we have a minimum and a maximum value. Um, we can increase, we have to increase the maximum value to above the default value. For example, we could say 10 kilohertz, let's say 10,000. The step, uh, we will keep to 1. This is the minimum change of the number of the variable. Let's press OK. And then we can apply this free to this variable to uh, to something. For example, we can open the signal source. And uh, here we have the different parameters of the signal source. Uh, and we have the frequency here. So instead of 1000, we will write frequ. Press OK. And you can see that the frequency actually reports still 1k. Why is that? It's because the default value of the variable is 1k. So it's filling in the default variable uh, value inside the preview of the content of the block. We can press play. And now we can see that we have a slider. This slider controls the frequency of the signal source. We can change it. And you can see that in real time, the frequency of the signal changes as well. If we were, we were to match the 500 hertz of the other tone, you can see that the two tones adapt to two and the two peaks disappear, just one appears. But let's now talk about one of the most important um, aspects of GNU Radio, which is the sampling rate. The sampling rate variable is defined first uh, uh, as a default value of 32k, so 32 kilohertz, and actually um, and this di dictates the default sampling rate of most blocks. Uh, we can choose any value. For example, if we were using an SDR, we would choose the sampling rate of the SDR, which is typically 1, 2 or more megahertz. And if we change uh, the sampling rate, the sampling rate variable, the sampling rate of all the blocks change as well. So the sampling rate of the signal source is changed, the sampling rate of the throttle has changed, and the bandwidth of the QT GUI sync has changed. If we now press play and zoom in and, and make the window a little bit bigger, okay, you can see now that the frequent the, the QT uh, GUI spans around 320 kilohertz. You can actually see that if we zoom in on the signal, you can see that it is, it is not as clear as before. We increased the sampling rate, but the signal, um, the, the two peaks of the signals are harder to discern. This is because the amount of points on the FFT is limited by the FFT size. As a default, we always have 1024 uh, uh, points on this plot, 
which means since we made the sampling rate 10 times higher, we now have 10 times as uh, lower resolution on the frequency domain. We can increase the FFT size, for example, we can go over to 8000. We can zoom back in, and now you can see that the two peaks are clearly visible once more. Same goes for uh, the waterfall. If we decrease the, si the FFT size to 1024, we are not able to see anymore the two peaks. But if you go to 1000, we will see the two peaks very clearly. Note also that the frequency of the two peaks is still 500 Hz and 1 kHz. Now, if I were to open the QT GUI sync and we can change the default sampling rate, the bandwidth, uh, let's say that uh, we do a tenth of the, the, of the uh, sampling rate that we set. This would mean 22 kHz instead of 220. So you, we see that the generation is at 320 kilohertz, the throttle is at 320 kilohertz, and the QT GUI sync is at 32 kilohertz. No error is shown, there is no mismatch in the, um, as far as the program is concerned. And if we pre press play and increase the FFT size and zoom in, we can see now that the peaks are actually at 50 hertz and 100 Hz. By changing the sampling rate of the sync block, we actually change the frequency of the signals, or at least what we see. This is because this, the, the information about the timing of the signal is contained inside the sampling rate. The, the blocks have no way to know what sampling rate they are supposed to use for a, for a determined signal. So the, this arrow do not carry the information of the sampling rate. So this block is receiving a signal at a sampling rate of 320 kHz, but it is interpreting it uh, as a 32 kHz sampled signal, which means that the frequencies will be different. This is just an error in the interpretation of the signal. Uh, so if you were to do operations on this signal, we have to take into account that all the frequencies will be shift. This also means that we also always have to take care of the sampling rate throughout uh, a flow graph. If the sampling rate changes unexpectedly and we give the, the wrong sampling rate to the wrong block, we will have a bad behavior of the system. For example, let's change the bandwidth back to 320 kHz but let's change the sampling rate of the signal source, of the second signal source. Let's make it a tenth and press play. Let's increase the FFT size and zoom in. You can now see that while the first signal is at 1 kHz, the second one is at 5 kHz instead of 500 Hz. This is because of the mismatch between the sampling rate. This is a very easy mistake to make and it becomes crucial when uh, an SDR comes around because you often have a change of sampling rate between one block and the other. In the next lecture we will get a signal from the environment as well as an SDR and we will see how to manipulate a signal, uh, a radio signal and how to apply some different modulations. So that's all for lecture number four. Thank you very much for following this uh, video tutorial. We hope it's helpful in setting up the course and supporting both students and teachers uh, for the course execution. And uh, see you for lecture five, the second part of the GNU Radio Companion Guide and uh, Setup of the Environment. Uh, we remind that all the materials can be downloaded for free on the SDR Play website. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you very much and see you soon.